Well, as our conversation has begun already, yep, obviously, yeah. we are going to be talking about traveling today. Mm-hmm. Traveling is fun, adventurous, life-changing, and we want to experience new things, new foods, and meet new people. But our main goal when we are traveling, no matter where we're going, is to come back home and be able to experience all of everything that we did with our loved ones, share mm-hmm. it with our loved ones. So this episode, we'll be sharing our experiences how as a woman or as a they being, we prepare for a trip, precautions that we take and other things that we do on a trip from booking to our Airbnbs, our hotels, and TSA approved protections. You know, whatever that is, okay? So we're getting into the real part of traveling as a beautiful being bright woman. AIB is a safe space for us ladies and ladies to discuss our bodies, physically, spiritually, and emotionally. We're offering insights, sharing stories, laughing, supporting, and unlocking our divinity together. There's no greater power than that of the flower that is always in bloom. As you can see today, we have... Hi, Nina. Hi, Nina. It's so good to see you. Thank you so so much. Thank you for being here. Yes. Yes. Nina is a Palestinian American comedian, author, and boxer who wears her religion on her sleeve. Well, on her head. She's been wearing her hijab since she was 13, and she has never let that get in the way of her being herself, no matter how much the odds were against her. After graduating from Montclair State University College Mm -hmm. of the Arts, With a bachelor's degree in media, that's where I actually met Nina, Um, Nina discovered her passion for comedy and began performing all over the States as well as internationally. Her first published book, which I do have a copy of, I'm a Princess Too, centers around a young Muslim girl just trying to live a normal life, which is what most of her stand-up is about. So Nina has been seen on the Food Network, TRT, and has opened for comics such as Tiffany Haddish, Lunell, and so many more. She is currently gearing up for her first professional boxing fight, (laughs) which is a whole blurb in and of itself, but we'll talk about that at a different time. So Nina, again, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. I met Mui at The Cage. Shout out to The Cage days. (laughs) Uh, We worked at a place and we used to just call it The Cage, which sounds terrible now. I was going to say like, what? It's like a tech center of like all the equipment. So we yeah. were in charge of it. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they had, like, a cage around. We so were literally we had, yeah. running that joint. Yeah, Queens people. of the cage. And oh, all the film and TV students used to be super nice to us because we yeah. controlled what gear they got literally. and whatnot. We oh, know. Yeah. We know they didn't like it. I used to kick yeah. ass to the people at Willie P at high school. And I was like, I need a camera. Oh, my God, you're so pretty. <laughs> I, was, I was a freshman. I was a freshman because uh, I did the film... Uh, department first um most of freshmen getting invited to like senior thesis shoots and i'm yeah. like oh yeah they're they want to be on my good side exactly <laughs> exactly it's funny because we went to like a pwi and like in the field of media it is very white male dominated and we are two bustling women of color mm-hmm. and you know like our our skills as they were growing like people were still being so much nicer to us you know like i was yeah. just like we're doing it we're doing yeah. it yeah power trip you know what i'm saying <laughs> exactly. we were literally queens like we said it everywhere queen yes. of africa queen of palestine like <laughs> we, were... we we had that in our bios on instagram yeah. forever i love that yeah. we know it we know it like, oh did you want a camera mm. interesting but yes it is i muyi ali it was your girl, Grace Annette. And this is Always a Bloom Podcast. Nina, again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just going keep, to keep on thanking you. But today we're going to be talking about traveling. And nice. you have been places. Lots <laughs> of been places. Too many places. <laughs> Lots of places. Well, and I'm going on tour in two weeks, in a week, in 10 days. And I'm going to seven countries oh. in three weeks. <gasps> Whoa. So I'm going to be on the go. On That's the go, crazy. girl. crazy. Is that yeah. for boxing? Is that it's for comedy? For comedy. Yes. I will be going to Qatar, Doha, Dubai, um, Oman. I'll be the first female to ever do stand-up comedy in Saudi Arabia. Nina. <laughs> what? Nina. Oh, my God. That's amazing. Well, non-Saudi woman because yes. they have comedians that live in the country and have done comedy, mm-hmm, but, like, mm-hmm. no woman who has came from, like, the outside to do comedy. Mm-hmm. 
that's incredible. That yeah, incredible. I don't think Saudi, because I'm going on a tour, and it's an all-female tour, mm-hmm. and it's uh, run by the Hollywood pop-up. Shout out to Ron. He's dope. He set this all up together. Um, and the tour is called That's What She Said Tour, and I don't think the people in Saudi understand like, the reference, because oh, yeah. they approved us to come and do it, and I'm like, if they really knew what That's What She Said meant, I don't think they would have <laughs> said yes. Yeah, okay. But hopefully this comes out after I perform, so it's too late. <laughs> <laughs> It's we'll going hold on to be to great. It. We'll hold on to it. Mm-hmm. It's going to be great. I really, I'm really excited because, yeah. like, what? That's so. That's, that's wild. That's Ooh, so yeah. intense. Like everyone's like, "What are you gonna talk about?" And I said, "Uh, knock knock jokes." So like, mm. come on. What do you keep it closer? Why did the chicken cross the road uh, to go to Mecca? Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna be all my. I'm not even jo- like. I don't care if I bomb. No pun intended. <laughs> no, I'm saying like I don't care if I do like terribly because I just want to do it. And come back, yeah, and oh be my okay. Because they don't fuck around in Saudi. Yeah, that's what I wanted they to don't. ask yeah. about, like the traveling with, like, safely, especially to these countries that are very specific in their practices and feelings about women, about yeah. women in comedy, women making a name for themselves. Yeah. Well, well, Saudi has a bad rep for various reasons. Yeah. Um, but they're they're really cool. they they've opened up their liberal. You don't have to wear niqab. You don't have to cover up. You can you can do whatever you want and stuff like that. But yeah. when it comes to like entertainment. They're still very strict. Yeah. Like, they have a, a section in their government that runs the entertainment in the entire country. So, like, can you imagine if, like, Justin Bieber wanted to come to America to perform? Someone in the U.S. government would have to, like, approve it. Yeah. That's how it is over there. Okay. So, when it comes to, like, entertainment, they're very helicopter. So, they approve every act that wants to do anything in the That's country. Mm-hmm. So, for them to, like, approve us, they've already, like, looked us up. I was yeah. gonna say, you know, like they probably did like oh, they went through your Instagram, you know, yeah. your website. They did everything in like a full background um, check, essentially. So when they tell us like we don't want jokes about like this, like we're not gonna do jokes about that. Oh, okay. <laughs> so they did like give you like a, a layout. I mean, the producer of the fest did, but it was kind of like to be expected. Like no, okay. no jokes about the government. Like you're not making fun of their government, right? Not in um, their country, <laughs> which is crazy because we have literal shows in America that make that are solely to make fun of the government. And I mean, solely. that's America's a mess. Like you know, yeah. the government probably makes fun of. Like, look at this bill we're passing. T. Like everyone's laughing about. Yeah. It. Like, um, if you make fun of the government out there, you're going to jail. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Oh my God. <clears throat> so I'm like, I'm gonna do the most clean, most not funny, most just go up there and be like, my name's Nina. <laughs> Hopefully they start laughing. Haha, <laughs> so funny. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I That's don't just spell it out, drag no, it out I, for a while. Your um, intro, because <laughs> I know a couple of my friends did did shows in Saudi last year, and they said that the crowds were awesome and they mm-hmm. had a fun time. And so I'm like, but they're men; they get away with it. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm excited though. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited for you. I'm glad that you're preparing um as appropriately as you can and especially that you're going with an actual group yeah. um an established um who's the production company that's Hollywood in? Pop-Up Hollywood mm-hmm. Pop-Up like an established company like you know you're you got to be safe. Yeah, yeah, you no, know no, no. I'm not that. I'm not worried about my safety. I just yeah. don't want to get into any trouble. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that, you know. Um <laughs> because like those countries like they really don't play like um Dubai has a very 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 it's one of the safest countries, by the way. Yeah. Um, I remember I went last year for a comedy festival and I left my laptop on like outside by accident. And I was like freaking out. And the producer was like, no one's going to touch it. Mm-hmm. I was like, what do you mean? He was like, it'll you can come back tomorrow and your laptop will still be there. No one steals in Dubai. It's not a thing. And I was like, what do you I was like, if I went to Starbucks and if I went to the bathroom, I would come back. My laptop is gone. Yeah. yeah. He was like, yeah. oh, no, no one steals out here. Yeah. I was like, that's amazing. Isn't like Dubai like very rich? Yeah. Anyhow. So yeah. Like, uh, yeah. But also they just it's not part nice. of their culture. Yeah. That they steal. Yeah. I was like, that's amazing. wild. You could also um, probably afford the laptop 10 times older. Yeah. But like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a very it's a very safe country. Uh, there's no like, there's no crime. Nothing happens. Um, it's illegal to uh, honk your horn. Ah, uh, I love yeah, that. It's a very polite country. I've watched a lot of uh, I watch a lot of YouTube uh, vlogs of people traveling, and like we'll get into it because like that's the way like I like to prepare. Like before yeah, I go, I'm like who sure. who on Who's YouTube gone has gone there that looks right. like me, yeah. and what was your experience? Right. And where did you go? Because. I need that. I need to come back the same way you yeah. did. Um, but yeah, no, a lot of those, I mean, it's obviously like fashion, like influencer vlogs, but like it's absolutely beautiful and clean. Mm-hmm. And just the innovation out there is like absolutely amazing. So I'm excited that you've been there and yeah. that you're going to go back and uh, I can't wait to watch videos. The only thing <laughs> is that they have like, Dubai has one of the strictest like no drug rules. Mm-hmm. Like, if you get caught with, like, just marijuana, you're going to jail for a long time, which Whoa. I kind of like because it prevents from like 
harsher drugs but i feel like marijuana is not really like a drug kind yeah, of thing yeah, you know yeah. but like it's like i kind of get it but um i know this one guy um he went to dubai from like for vacation his appendix burst while he was there so when he went to the hospital they they like did tests and stuff and he tested positive for drugs because he had the drugs like a week before wherever he came from and he went to jail after his surgery oh my god because he had did it not even they didn't catch him with drugs because they couldn't prove when he did it oh my goodness he like went there for vacation got sick and then ended up in prison oh my god do you know how long for I I think his like country consulate like got him out of it or something but like they don't play yeah yeah. That's inc- oh my God, so that it's like good me. and bad Looking at the same time. <laughs> no, yeah, Dubai. definitely <laughs> don't. No. Like everyone knows, like if you go like to those countries, like you don't bring anything with you. Like I've gone, I've gone to LA and had my weed pens in my purse. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, it's whatever, you know. Yeah. So if that's you go also domestic too. To those countries, like don't don't do drugs. Don't, <laughs> You're don't, gonna don't get do drugs, popped. Don't drugs, yeah. Don't oh my gosh. Okay. Um, that's so much information. I want to know the places that you have traveled. Your yes. favorite place, your least favorite place. Alphabetical, uh, alphabetical, alphabetical order. Go. What? I'm I do just that. Type <laughs> of, I do A and B. <laughs> I was talking international or like domestic. All of them. Yeah. Just like. Living. Well, my favorite place to go is obviously back home, Palestine, the West Bank. Word, word. word. Um, I haven't gone in two years because of COVID, but I'm going oh. this summer, and Beautiful. I cannot wait. Oh my god! I'm like Exciting. counting the days until I go back. So that's definitely my favorite place. Um, I'm very busy. Um, I'm a workaholic. I was always in school working yeah. multiple. So like, if I ever had a week off, which was so rare, like I always picked to just go back home. That's so cute. for a while, I just didn't travel anywhere internationally because if I'm gonna go somewhere international, like I'm just gonna yeah. go back to Palestine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Me with DR. Anytime, yeah. I'm just like, oh, but I can just go back to DR for a couple of days. Like <laughs> it's just so easy. My best friend Shakira is Dominican. You remember Shakira? Yeah, of course, of course. And um, she sure. went to DR to meet her dad for the first time, and she made me go with her. So I went to DR, but we didn't go to like a resort or anything. We went yeah, to the yeah, capital. Yeah. So then like a couple months later, I was going to Palestine and I'm like, I went to your home country, bitch. You're coming to mine. Right. So I took her to Palestine with me. Oh, that's so yeah, we had, a, we had a great time. Um, I also love LA. I can't live there though. Yeah. I don't know why. I live in that far west. That's but west, I right? love going. I go Which once part? a month. Oh, that literally LA. West Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. I, when I was over there, I was over there for like six months or so, like living in that area. And I was like, wow, this is like, a cleaner New York, cleaner New York, and but not anymore. Oh, the homeless is nuts in, in LA? LA. It's oh. a thousand times worse than New York. Mm. I mean, new- I felt that way when I when I went also, but I felt the homelessness where they were just walking around, kind of minding their business. You know, no, no. I hear stories from my friends who live in LA, um, and I feel like the homeless in LA mess with people whereas the homeless in new york just kind of want some money Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying yeah are there crazy homeless people in new york that do stuff sure but like the majority of them kind of just like just ask you for money and keep it moving like people the homeless in la like rob you and shit oh wow yeah oh wow that's intense i mean this just happens lack of resources create i know there's like a wave of it where there's like more homeless people in like the west during like the winter time because like they just, a lot of them get, like, shipped off out that way because it's so cold here. Mm-hmm. To be, and then yeah. they just end up coming back for the winter. So, like, we'll see how, like, things, like, disperse. But I know that things have gotten a lot worse out west. I actually, I did hear that, like, from my Uber driver. He let me know that, like, what was it? New York was paying L.A. to take their homeless Yeah, they people? were literally, like, yeah, like, literally buying them train tickets That's... to go to, like, out west to L.A. so that they would Please be there in the winter time. Just also, in Dubai, during COVID, they would get hotels, clear them out, and make them into homeless shelters. Oh, and that's amazing. still have the staff to, like, clean and everything. So the staff still had jobs. It's just amazing. a little. So it is possible. possible. It's possible. It's just possible. Just a little tidbit. Um, no way, Nina. That's just a little. <laughs> just a little sidebar. Um, my least favorite place. What's funny is that my least favorite pra- place didn't become my least favorite place until I grew up and realized what was going on in the world. Oh, no. Oh, no. Because <laughs> when me and Shakira, we were um, in, in high school. Our, our class trip was to Paris. Mm-hmm. And I, at the time, I was wearing a hijab, but I was like 17. I didn't know anything about like racism and stuff. Like yeah. I was very sheltered. I didn't know yeah. the real world. And Shakira's very dark-skinned Dominican. Mm-hmm. And we kind of felt like people were being rude. Yeah. And like maybe we're just being 
sense. Maybe that's just the way it is. And then, yeah. like, I grew up and I realized how racist French people are. And then I was like, fuck that place. <laughs> Yeah, I definitely have gone to Paris before also. And it was after, like, there was the November attacks or something. Um, And I was wearing my hijab at the time also. And I was also, I was dark-skinned then as well. And um, (laughs) they were not very nice. Like, there were times where I couldn't even go in places or, like, they would check me extra. But, of course, it was to make sure, you know, like, obviously, checking for bombs and things like that. Because the... The thing that just happened but i'm like i'm literally not doing that you know yeah. that i'm not doing that so i always like, tell my black hijabi friends i'm like not only are you a woman not only are you black you also wear a hijab yeah you're triple fucked yeah. i'm only double fucked <laughs> yeah it's they're little... like fuck you need i'm like it's kind of true it's liter- literally like it's so many odds are against you as a being it's so tough yeah people suck they do. Mm. Racism sucks. Yeah. Mm. I'm not going to say that at all. Sucks. I mean, Paris was beautiful. Yes. It was very pretty. Yeah. We went, we did all the touristy stuff. Um, surprisingly, the Eiffel Tower is not that big. Oh. I've heard that. What were you comparing it to? <laughs> what were you expecting? It's like some huge thing, and it wasn't that, it was like, I was like, this is it? It was mad small. <laughs> I'm from I was so surprised. It, it, you are like, mm. <laughs> This is it. <laughs> I will say the one way that I really do prepare for like trips is um, I'll go on like Pinterest and I'll write like girls in Paris outfits. I'm sorry, that's how I you prepare. Love that. Yeah, <laughs> like prepare your outfits. Yeah. What about everything else? Like I wh- kind of just roll with it. <laughs> oh my goodness! Do you usually travel alone? Yes, and I know it's dangerous. Mm, yeah. Um, if you don't know what you're doing, but it seems like you don't. No, I. I <laughs> I like you yeah. just show up. <laughs> I've been in some shitty situations, uh-huh. like abroad and whatnot. Oh no! I've been like, I should have planned this. I should have uh, planned better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank God that like this tour that I'm going on is like run by a company and like they're handling everything and like mm. taking us from like because like I would I would be lost. Yeah, I, I just, would. It would be bad. But oh. you'd look great. Thank you. You'd look real appropriate for I, the situation you were in. All your outfits would be. On point. Yeah. Yes. I remember uh, when I went to the Dubai Fest last year, um, I the first thing I did was like girls in sand desert outfits. <laughs> I know that. I and um, I, I got think my. You're like, um, your Is Instagram flowy? picture, a white flowy yes. outfit. That's what you gotta do. You got the little flowy thing. So Her Instagram picture looked like a Pinterest post. Thank you. Love that's, exa- that's exactly <laughs> my picture. I watch so many I'm Dubai going vlogs to <laughs> show you. It's literally that. You have to do like the, the side angle and then you have to like the, let the, the wind go. I went to Fre- shades. I went to Forever Twenty One and I went to the plus size section because I like I wanted it to be super flowy. Mm-hmm. So I went and got like a smaller size in the plus size, like um a white beach cover up. Yeah. And then I wore jeans, like white jeans under and a white and it just oh, it looked so great. Cute. Yeah. It looked great. I love but that. But then we went to the zoo and I got bit by an orangutan and then I ended up in the hospital. Oh my gosh. So I should have prepared for like that and not like just my outfit. <laughs> okay, but how, how, do how can you prepare, you prepare for how that? You, how do you, you don't? I mean, I like you. Got, I mean, what about like health insurance and like common practices? Don't go touching the orangutans. You know, like they, you can look that up. They were like, you could pet them. Oh, is it because um, you were a tourist? Like maybe no. like the locals knew not to touch. Well, them. no, because the monkey was like k- kissing and hugging all the other comedians. She just didn't like me. Oh. Nina, it was, it was a personal attack. Yeah. Well, the other co- <laughs> so they were saying that monkeys are very territorial mm-hmm. and they're like very jealous. Oh, you and, were too um, cute for the monkey. No, because I was the only girl, and her mm-hmm. like owner, she loves him so much, and she hates any girls that he brings around. <gasps> and they're like, that's really how monkeys are. Oh my god. So they were like, she does, and then she kept like pushing me away from him, like literally pushing me. Like I'll show you a video. It was crazy. And then he was like, no, no. And he was like, no, be nice to her. She's nice. And then the monkey came and bit me. And then, like, <laughs> he was like, no, stop it. And she, like, went down and she went like this. And then he gave her a treat and she went and started, like, kissing him. And I'm like, oh, she knew what she was doing. Yeah. Monkeys yeah. are really smart. Yeah. Um, oh so don't go to, like, the zoos and stuff if you travel. <laughs> okay. Which are, These are just, like, do's and don'ts yeah. of traveling. Do's and don'ts of travel. where, where was that? It was in Dubai. Okay. 
How did that work uh, medically? Uh, I went to like an urgent care thing and they were real cool. They were like, you're fine. Mm -hmm. And then I flew home that night and then I went to the emergency room okay. and the doctors in America were like, I'm like, are you guys going to put me in like a tube or something? No, for yeah, real. Are they going to quarantine you? Yeah, yeah no, for real. Like an international animal. Yeah, literally. <laughs> so, literally. So like, um, I got bit that morning and um, at first it just looked like a hickey. Oh. And then um, but by the time like I got to America, it was like my arm got infected a little bit. Oh, no. So like when I went to the hospital, they were like, oh, what kind of dog bit you? And I was like, orangutan. They were like, she said, Leonard started laughing. She was so sweet. She's like, no, like what, like what kind of dog? Like, a, like she's like your friend's dog. You know, you got to get that checked. I'm like, no, no, a monkey bit me. Right. She was like, at the Bronx Zoo? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, in Dubai. She was like, when? I was like, this morning? I just got, she was like, what? She's yeah. like, Hold on. Literally, had to she go went and got somebody. like a. She went and then like a, like three doctors or I hear them like all whispering like, "What do we like?" <laughs> and look, should I have went to a vet? Like, <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> they didn't know what to do with me, so they just like started like doing like random tests and like they gave me like immunity boosters and. Was like, this an urgent care or your regular? PCB? Yeah, I went like, to the hospital. And they were. There's no way that they don't know like, how what? to handle. But, no, but they were just like, yeah. we don't. Do you feel okay? And I was like, yeah, I feel fine. They're like, you're probably fine then. Like, but that's what they're supposed okay, to you figure out. Is that that why you went to <laughs> so I got like blood work done, and they were just like, just, just keep, be very cautious of how you're feeling. If you get a feet, like come back I'm for any reason. You, you had health insurance. Yes. Okay. Thank God. I'm just trying to figure out how the doctors they were all what? really cool. Uh, but they were like, we've never dealt, no one's ever came here with a monkey bite. Like, we don't have monkeys in New York. They could have referred you to somebody. I <laughs> but just, there, there's definitely They did a bunch of tests of and, and stuff. An SOP somewhere out there right. that's like, okay, like, somebody comes in from international, like, flight or, like, place and, like, is bitten by an animal there. Even if it's not an orangutan, like, I get it. But also during like, COVID. Oh, yeah, that's um, what I was going to ask also. So they were just like, oh, man. And I was <laughs> like... I'm sorry. Like, you know, <laughs> got COVID. Like, right. I was just like, I, I wasn't my intention to like bring back a disease. And then I was like, do I have an STD? They're like, that doesn't, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> Good. I was like, I'm scared. They're like, you're, you're okay. They're like, just keep checking yourself. And if you feel anything, just come back. But okay. you're, everything seems to be okay. Okay. That week later it healed up and I was like I'm still alive that's so cool. that's cool. I'm like that's if I grow alive. a tail or something um, yeah I'm waiting for you to like zombie out zombie it's been like a year now oh, okay so. no she good she not, she I'm actually zombie. doing the sh the same show in two weeks so like you you have to go back and see the monkey I was gonna say don't go back need to see the monkey please. they were they were like we we want you to do like a one year like where you guys are at in life I was <laughs> no. like please you're in danger. <laughs> Please don't do she that does to not yourself. Like you. If it's you guys okay. want to see the video of me getting bit by a monkey, it's on my Instagram. It'll also be available in the show notes. <laughs> All of her contact information. I want to talk to you because you said that you wear your religion on your sleeve. Well, on your head, you know. And I want to talk about how you feel confident traveling to all these different places. Um while being in a minority group or not as confident as the... How do you travel confidently in a minority group? Um, I definitely have some sort of privilege because I don't get bothered too much in America. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's when I like travel outside, or not even in America, I lied. Like in, I grew up in New York, New Jersey area. It's very diverse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are there racist people? Sure. But, like, in my area where I grew up, like, um, it was very uh, mixed, and it was mostly Arabs. So, mm -hmm. like, my high school, there was, like, 20 hijabis, mm -hmm. and it was a public mm -hmm. school. So I never felt, like, the only one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for, like, my the first, like, 18 years of my life, I was like, oh, it's normal to be different. It's normal to wear hijab. Like, I was yeah. very, my friends were all Dominican. There was a, the half the kids were black. Like, it was, I think white kids were the minority at my high school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I grew up very, like... Everything is fine. Yeah. And then when I started like working and going to the city, yeah, I was like, oh, we're, we're people think I'm weird, like, <laughs> yeah. you know. So then, um, even just like going to work or going to the city and stuff, people would stare and like say, I've gotten. I always say like I got bullied after I became an adult. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh my god! Like no one used to say things to me in my in, at high school. Like yeah. no one cared. It was when I started like. Going to the airport, people would stare. People would make comments or just, like, they get uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. you, it's like you could just sense people's energies. They just, like, it just goes down. Did you um, feel a difference, like, post 
Um, what was that like 2001? And we were relatively young, but you've been traveling before. I was so young. Yeah, I was in like second grade or third grade, probably uh. first grade. But my mom said that like it was really bad, even in our area. Mm-hmm. She said the bus wouldn't the buses wouldn't stop for her. They would make comments. My mm-hmm. mom's Venezuelan, so she speaks Spanish. Um, but she doesn't look like she speaks Spanish. So she, my mom would be like, I would go to the grocery store and people would make, people would be talking around me and I understood them. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's, it's crazy. Um, I get more harassed online than anything though. Yeah, I mean, that's because they're, it's clo- clo- cloaked, you know, yeah. like yeah. they can hide behind their keyboard. I've, I've gotten death threats. Yeah. Um, it's crazy. And I'm like, for what? You have too much freedom and too much time. Uh, yeah, they do. Way too much. Uh, I used to freelance at Fox News, mm-hmm. so that was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we don't, we, I mean, you could talk about it if you so desire. Yeah, no. But. Um, the staff were cool. Mm-hmm. Everyone was like, everyone like knew they were there for the paycheck, and yeah. no one really <laughs> gave a shit about. And Fox is very good to their employees. They one of the highest paid companies. They offer car service if you work late. Like they feed. Like they're very mm-hmm. good to their people, and that's why everyone works there because mm-hmm. it's a great place. Aside from the content they put out, <laughs> aside for everything else that they do. Um, and shout out to my manager. She was a, a black woman. She was awesome, and like we kind of just like gave each other the nod. Like I know why you're here. You know why I'm here. Kind of thing. <laughs> and she was like a, a high level manager. But I'm pretty sure she didn't believe anything she mm. was putting out on air. But it's like a reality show. The only people who really like believe it are like the hosts. Mm. And then it's kind of like, do you really believe that? Right. Are you just... You're still performing. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is hefty. But there was like once in a while where I'd be in the building and people would be like, like just like staring or mm. uh, people assume that I don't speak English or it's... It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, that that is crazy. So how do you navigate it when you do travel to these places? Because obviously it's not like you remove your hijab or like speak more brightly English or something. Like what what is it that you do? Honestly, Especially if you're going alone. Honestly, I'm kind of... I know you're not supposed to say this about yourself, but I'm really nice. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I become kind of a bitch yeah. on purpose yeah. because they don't expect it. Yeah. And they think that I'm going to kind of just like accept the disrespect because I'm a hijabi mm-hmm. but when I snap they're like oh no she's not that. one yeah. to um like I remember actually this was in in domestic flights and I tweeted about it at the time and no one cared it was the whole thing um <laughs> we had went to New Mexico for a family wedding mm-hmm. we were off that it was like 50 of us one of my aunts is very religious she wears like the black like abayas mm-hmm. like the, the long ones and she doesn't speak English she ended up getting the emergency seat now, when you sit in the emergency seat, you have to consent to mm-hmm. saving people's lives. So she turned around in Eric, Eric, she was like, what's this lady saying? Mm-hmm. So we started laughing and the lady was like, oh, ma'am, you can't, you can't sit in that seat, blah, 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 which I understand. Mm-hmm. I understand the rules. You have to consent to saving people's lives. If you don't speak English, whatever. So I told my aunt, switch seats with me. Mm-hmm. She was like, okay. She gets up and we're switching seats. And I'm telling the lady, and she's, the stewardess is telling my aunt that she needs to get off the plane. Mm. She's like, you can't be on this flight. To speak for speaking to you? Or? For for not being able to consent to the emergency seat. But uh, me and my aunt were switching seats. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was like, I consent to saving everyone's life. Even though I can't swim, that's never going to happen. But <laughs> cool. And this woman just wanted my aunt off that flight. Mm-hmm. And she was like, she needs to get off this flight. She can't fly. And I was like, why does she need to get off this flight? Like, what's the, what's, what was the reason? Right. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I made... When I told you I made a scene and right. everyone started pulling out their phones and I was like, you are not going to fucking do this shit, right? You right. don't fucking know who the fuck I am. Like, it was a, but I feel like if I didn't do that, she wouldn't have backed off mm-hmm. yeah. because she was like adamant about like getting my aunt off, the, off that flight. Right. For what reason? I don't yeah. know. Like oh I, we switched seats, mm-hmm. but she just, she, I could tell she saw what my aunt was wearing mm-hmm. and she just like wasn't having it. Yeah. Because I could tell from like from her energy and stuff. So I'm like, I become very mean. Yeah. Um, rightfully so. Yeah. Because I felt like if I just was, oh, what's the problem? She would have pulled some, she would have like made up a rule or something. Yeah. So I navigate like, Oh, you can't being, switch seats and da 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 da. Like, you can do whatever you want. It's a freaking airplane. Yeah, I bought my I, ticket already. <laughs> yeah. So like I navigate when yeah. by being like super mean, which I don't want to be. Yeah. But like a, a bunch of women, girls safety. were like, yes, yeah. Like, <laughs> 
because like she was being so unreasonable yeah. and then she skipped me i definitely it. have to put like on a mean mug if someone like talks to me too quickly like you know like i'm just like because i got like this babyish face and like my frame is a little compact so people yeah. think that they can just start talking to me in a certain type of way so it's like i have to try to big myself up in order to get that respect because of how i come off and also if i'm ever lost somewhere i always always put on a British accent because I don't think that they would just respect me as just my regular American oh, self we, I'm serious I'm like oh do you know where the loo is I'm on my way to the loo just to find a special place like a bathroom because it's very easy to take advantage of people when they're traveling especially alone it's what it is demanding respect because they yeah. look at you right away and they're like oh she's not someone that I need to respect yeah or she's not gonna ex- she's, she accepts this type of like treatment yeah because um, they assume that Especially if you're wearing your hijab, they just assume that you get, like, abused or you're oppressed or... Yeah, or can't, so they, can't speak. Yeah. <laughs> so that's how it goes. You know, I mean mug, but I usually have my headphones in. And that's where, like, I fail because, like, my headphones will be in, like, too loudly. So as soon as anybody wants to talk to me, like... I don't keep the mean mug as soon as you interact with me. Like, yeah, I, it immediately me. dissipates, like full veil gone like oh my god what did you want like i get like really nice <laughs> and then i have to like go back to being mean if it's like a one of like those situations um but that's usually like like when i'm traveling by myself it's very much like i know exactly where i'm going like my phone is literally in my hand just in case anything's about to happen my headphones are in yeah. my ear um i haven't like traveled abroad or, or anywhere by myself but since you have do you have like any sort of like routine like okay like you get to the hotel and like or you like only go to certain like x places to, to eat by yourself like mm-hmm. how does that usually go or activity wise i want to know what do you meet up with people there, there yeah too. i want to um usually when i go back home to palestine um I've gone by myself, so I usually just go to, like, my family's houses. Yeah. I kind of just jump out the airport and get a taxi. Um, Any taxi you don't, like, pre-order? like yeah. Nah, I just jump out. Okay. Um, I'm t- <laughs> <laughs> It'll be there. <laughs> it's terrible. Um, yeah, so, I, or, like, so I'll have someone pick me up, but, like, when, um, any other time I've gone international was for comedy, so producers kind of just, like, book everything for you, which is mm-hmm. nice. But I will say one time... I have a lot of friends in L.A., so I usually just crash with them. But one time I went to L.A. and I was like, you know what? I want to just go by myself and I want to, like, veg out and I want to just go by the beach and get, like, an Airbnb by myself and write and whatever. It was the worst decision I've ever made. Oh. It was terrible. Oh. So I I fly to L.A., stayed with my friend for a few days, and I was like, okay, I'm going to Uber to my Airbnb, whatever, I'll see you in a few days. She's like, are you sure? Yeah. I got an Airbnb in Venice. Mind you, I booked it online and everything was nice and clean and beautiful mm-hmm. and it was right on the beach and it was not too expensive and I was like, oh, okay. When I tell you I got there and it was a hostel. Oh. But, I mean, I know some people actually use hostels. No, like, no, no, no. But like, yeah, no, but that, like in the doorway, like there was like 10 homeless people like doing crack. Okay. And like my Uber driver was like, I'm going to walk you to your room. No. And no, but he, I was like, he, we were like chatting the whole time, and yeah. like I, like, and I was like, yeah, because I was like that scared. No, I mean, like, I meant no, as in like, don't live there. But I had nowhere else. It was like one in the morning, oh. so he was like, let me just. He was like, he's like, do you want me to like just go inside with you? Yeah, I was like, that's please. A, that's really nice. Of he him. grabbed my bags and he was like, excuse me. Like we went over the people doing drugs, and then um, I was like, you know what? I'll just stay here the night. In the morning, I'll check out, get a hotel. I go to the room and there's no lock on the door. And it's a shared bathroom on the like on the hallway. And he was like, "Do you want me to take you to a hotel?" And I was like, "Oh, thank you, thank you. I'm glad <laughs> oh that's how God. that ended." I, I like, where? How would you? Where did you sleep? Like this? it was dirty. Dis- it was there was and then um. So what had happened was the guy at the front desk didn't want the guy to come and bring my bag up because. I had checked in just for one person and they were not letting anyone else come in. Mm -hmm. I figured it was because of COVID. It was because the day before that someone got robbed, like armed robbery. And I was like, I need to get out of here. Did you like report that Airbnb? (laughs) No, but like their website is like total cap. (laughs) <laughs> oh my god that's well, crazy like that, that definitely it needs to be reported to airbnb because you like that's like illegal you can't do yeah that. also you can't provide people no lock no there was no lock on the door oh in a shared god. space when you're traveling no that's that's very dangerous yes incredibly dangerous oh so god. when i go like 
now I'm money back. I'm yes, for you. I called, oh my, my, I called so my credit card right company now. and I was like, I want my money back. It was yeah. they like refunded me my money back. But like now when I go like overseas and stuff, I make sure it's like a nice hotel, it's like mm. a chain hotel. Yeah, the chain hotels are the safest. Yeah. yeah. Um. So I just Airbnbs are very sketch. I used to trust Airbnbs more. I feel like. Not at the beginning of Airbnb, but there was like the sweet sort of like middle situation of Airbnb. Because in more recent times, there has been like more sketchy situations yeah. uh, like yours. Um, but I do like when it's international, like over waters, I do do like chain hotels. Like you will not catch me at an Airbnb yeah. like overseas. But domestically, I don't mind doing an Airbnb. Because I like like when we went to that Airbnb in uh, New Orleans, Mui and I went to New Orleans. Um, it was really nice. I enjoyed. It. I know you didn't like it as much as I did, but there I enjoyed were hella it. Hella stairs. Um, <laughs> yeah, I feel like I feel more confident in an Airbnb if I'm not alone. If I'm with like three or more people, then I'm like, ah, yeah, they could get them first. But <laughs> if I'm traveling by myself, and I do not want to be in an Airbnb because I think of all the people who have been in the Airbnb, like they have the lock to it, and it's just a comfort thing like everyone on the block knows which house is the airbnb like they're always having new cars over there like it's just like i don't need people to know that that i'm not a regular i like to make sure i'm not necessarily standing out when i'm traveling somewhere what's That's so crazy is that we feel so much more safer in america to do these things whereas like america's so violent it, I, <laughs> I, I we shouldn't feel safer. safe in this country doing these these this fuck shit that we do yeah, yeah. Uh, well speaking on behalf of myself um <laughs> Like it's it's a very dangerous country. It is. Yeah, yes. It really is. Especially as a woman. My mom is always like I walk around with my keys. I got a little little jabby keys, uh, to stab people. Dude, someone got case. this guy cut shot a bunch of people on the N train last yeah. week. Like yeah. that's crazy. One of them kid was just like going to school. Yeah. The subway has been absolutely ridiculous l- lately. People just being pushed down, like elderly we- women just being pushed downstairs. Yeah. Like purses being robbed, feces being smeared on people's yeah. faces. Like, oh my God. That one took me like a few days to just like what? Like one human did that to another? Like And it used to be that. like after 11 or 12, you know, take a taxi. But it's like, this is like morning. Yes. Yeah. People on their daily commute, hella witnesses, just pushing someone cops in the middle. Cops everywhere. Yeah. And they still don't care. Yeah. Everywhere. Which is crazy because the cops don't let shit slide, especially when it's like the homeless people or anyone that looks. They don't let. T- oh, you, ju- I was say, you jump a turnstile. They're going to be on your ass. But bring a weapon, like. you Gucci. Like, mm, so, that's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's wild in these streets. Even like <laughs> traveling, not necessarily on a plane, but traveling, just walking around in the streets. It is pretty crazy. Yeah, because do I don't have a car. So and I'm I'm a comedian, so I club hop at night. Mm-hmm. You know, on Friday I just had I had two spots. So like I went from Midtown to like my first spot and then I took the train to my second spot. My second spot wasn't until like eleven thirty at night. So then when I took the train back, it was like one in the morning mm-hmm. and there was just it's a homeless shelter down there, oh my God. which That's, is really sad. Yeah, but um, it shouldn't be like our responsibility to, like, the government and the city should like yeah, to, house them yeah, so we don't have to deal so. with them yeah. throwing shit at us literally. Do you walk around with anything? Do you have any sort of like mace? Little, no, but I need to get one. Knife or what? I know. You I need to get a taser. I mean, yes, yeah, she does. Well, she I mean, has like, so she many has things. Literally, her two fists. <laughs> um, um, yeah, but is, people. I don't. Because I'm like, I'm weak. I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm wondering. I'm like, I'm just whipping out weapons here because even if that I weapon, like, fight. You, you have to be in the person. You know, like that weapon that you have. Yeah. Like I just, I don't like that. I have my little ten foot spray. 10 foot she just, said just ten don't feet away <laughs> just please don't come please just quick spray how sh- should I buy a taser illegally on well, the black market um you can buy one legally I will say tasers I, are legal you can buy a you taser you can't ship them to, to New York and New Jersey though you, you can t- yeah can I have ta- t- t- three where'd you tasers buy tasers and pepper spray can be bought and shipped to New Jersey just can't be uh to New York mm. really mm-hmm because I went on Amazon and it was like you, shipping is not available in your location. Did you have a New York address? In? No, New Jersey. That's mm-hmm. interesting. I definitely Maybe it's like... Amazon then. Just that yeah, doesn't... I feel like I got mine off of Amazon, but, but I think I... it's up to a certain like voltage. But you can oh. definitely like s- startle someone I'm to get them check. away. I think the ones that are illegal are the ones that shoot out. Cause yeah, like can't, you tasers. can't have like a, a tase gun. That's a tase gun? Yeah, yeah. or something like that. It's Why not? I want to be far gun. away. A stun exactly. gun. I want to be far away. I don't want to be like up exactly. in your Exactly. That's why I was like, please don't come to me. 
like, I gotta, I gotta get out there. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, like, I'd rather like do it from far away. Yeah, no. And you can buy the, the handheld ones, the one where it's like it's close. And, yeah. Like, and this, and it's not, I think it's, because I think there is a difference between the pepper spray and then there's like a pepper gel. And a and mace. A, and a mace. They like, there's. What's the difference? the ingredients and I think the <laughs> consistency <laughs> oh yeah that gel don't make no sense like it's like a spray it looks like something from like men in black like it'll just <laughs> but <laughs> but That's I will say like cause my sister's a cop even though fuck the police love my sister though um <laughs> When they were, like, training and stuff, they had to get pepper sprayed so they know how much yeah. it hurts so you don't, like, abuse it. Oh, because but when you pepper spray people, you also get pepper sprayed. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, <laughs> Everyone's under attack. Everyone is under attack. Exactly. That is so that's why I'm saying, like, is that really uh, the best thing to do on a subway when you're also on that subway? Um, If you... Uh, I, the subway cart is actually big enough for you to be able to pepper spray and, like, kind of get far away enough where you're not severely impacted. But it's not good for like clo- like in here we would like we would all die. It's, dub. <laughs> it's yeah. a complete dub. dub. I know this sounds like like super sexist and whatever, but like the men on these subways who like don't defend people getting like harassed mm-hmm. is like crazy to me. Oh, yeah, because yeah, they can't do anything. They can fight. They can't. They can't fight. And what are, what are they gonna do? I mean, they could do a better job than someone who looks like me necessarily. Exactly. But I'm gonna. I'm more likely to stand up than a lot of these other. And not only people. that, just like scientifically, men are usually stronger than women. Like, mm-hmm. n- you, I'm not even talking about like physically do anything. But like, I feel like if a guy is harassing a woman, and a few guys say something to him, he's probably gonna stop. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Whereas if I'm like, hey, man, don't do that. He's going to be like, fuck you. Yeah, fuck you, like, bitch. Like, man. I'm not saying you need to f- get involved physically. But, mm-hmm. like, sometimes these, there's, like, there'll be so many guys on the subway and they're just, like, Yeah. Staring. That silence is, like, consent in a way of, like, oh, yeah, this is what's happening and no one's doing anything about it. So no it must be anything. okay to do it. No. That's awful. That's the bystander, bystander effect? Is that the, the actual, like, psychological uh, terminology for it when like if there's a whole bunch of people around and something's happening yeah. like people are less likely to speak up about it because versus like someone else if like to. one person was getting attacked and it was just you like you would definitely jump in because you're like well it's just me like I'm gonna come and help but if there's like a whole room of people everybody's yeah. just gonna be like alright well is it, are you gonna go help because are you gonna go help because like there's mad people here alright well if none of us are gonna do anything then like none of us so are gonna do like anything monkey see monkey do kind of thing yeah. like if one person jumps in they all do but I feel like it should just be yeah Someone has to help. Some, this, somebody needs to speak yeah. up. We, or we need to just be in Dubai. Because uh, traveling is very that, uh, dangerous for women, even locally. Um, that recent, uh, <laughs> it was like in the last couple of months, uh, uh, slight trigger warning of that. I mean, we were talking about a whole bunch of different things. But um, that late, that woman that was uh, being sexually molested on the Philly train for like three stops on like literally like a cart full of people and this guy was just like sexually uh abusing this woman on the train for three full stops and like no and did nobody did anything oh my god i was like you are you've got to be kidding me there's no way in a f- cart full of people three full stops they made before like i think the cops came or somebody finally like got him off and like got him out of the cart that bothers me so much so much yeah that bothers me more than the actual perpetrator because that guy is obviously just not normal or just like yeah. these are like everyday guys going to work and going to going on dates and they're just like oh I saw some woman getting raped on the train and didn't do right? anything about it like oh like, how was your commute to work this morning oh no yeah there was a woman getting raped or whatever like what like and you did nothing you didn't that's terrible saddens me that's awful stay safe ladies so how do we how do we stay safe um I said that I try my best to not stand, <coughs> stand out um, as little as possible. I remember I was traveling with one of my friends and they, they had like really big hair, like just like, ooh. And we were in a country that did not have big hair. We were in England. <laughs> um, and I was just like, yo, tie your hair back. People are watching, you know? Cause I was like tripping. I was like, we're in the middle of the night in this foreign country and we look like we're standing out. Um, so how do we, as women, travel safely and confidently and comfortably? Like, what do you do? What do you do? I don't think we can. Truthfully, we always just have to be on guard everywhere that we go. There is no safe space for us. Mm -hmm. Um, Except for always in bloom. Yes. And as a woman who does not exercise and has zero, like, combat skills, unless it was, like, a do or die, like, my adrenaline is going to, like, start rushing. Uh, I got my my pepper spray. I got my little little jabby thing. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'm loud. 
that's all I got. Like, I... That's, that's powerful. There's it's a power in that. That's all I got. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm just going to really hope that that's going to carry me through cause, and that somebody's going to come help me and that my angels are going to protect me. And that yeah. I, like, and everything else is just pray. Yeah, literally. <laughs> pray really, really hard. I pray so hard before I travel, no matter where. Before I go outside, I cleanse the spaces that I'm in before beforehand. Like, that energy's not jumping on me. Yeah. Not here. I try to just um, 